very good evening to our viewers. Welcome to the Evening Review Show. I'm your host, Matthias Haufiko. Well, it's just a day before over 1.4 million Namibians go to the polls to vote for a party and a presidential candidate of their choice. And we wish everyone well with that exercise tomorrow. Well, on the show tonight, we are joined by a preacher, uh, Mr. Erastus Murigwa. And uh, he's here tonight to, for us to discuss the, 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 the element of how politics and Christianity intertwines. And uh, this topic, uh, I, I believe, is, comes at a very opportune time when Namibians are getting ready to go to the polls. Good evening, Mr. Nguliko, and welcome to the Evening Review. Good evening, Matthias. Thanks for having me. No, it's indeed a pleasure. Good evening, viewers. Yeah, thank you. Talk to us, break down this, these two very, very opposing sort of uh, uh, systems within our society. Politics one side, Christianity one side. Many people always wonder, can these two even be merged, or is it a, met a case of oil and water? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, civil rights. Mm -hmm. You know, civil rights, every citizen got civil rights yeah. to do, uh, to participate in some um, important uh, things in, in, the, in the community. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about civil rights, we're talking about voting, we're talking about uh, rights to participate in uh, political parties, I mean, political and uh, rights to, to belong or to affiliate to any political party. Mm -hmm. So those are civil rights, and also to adhere to the laws and regulations of the of the country. Mm -hmm. So now, when it comes to Christianity and politics, uh, this conception, uh, I mean, this concept have uh, uh, a lot of uh, implication when people are thinking about it. They think being a Christian, you shouldn't uh, participate in politics. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't even need to campaign or. To even just to belong to a political party because you are a Christian. And mostly you find it in the community like Christians are, this, are the people that are saying, now nah, leave politics for politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, politics is a dirty game and all those wrong beliefs. It's not a dirty game. Mm -hmm. It's just a civil right for every citizen. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So w where do you think this perception comes from where people think that... Uh, uh, Christianity and, poli and politics should not mix. Where, where is it coming from? Uh, the community at large, they mm -hmm. believe, you know, people are procrastinating about uh, being uh, a Christian and being a politician. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Even though, like, uh, if you are a Christian, let me say, a church leader like me, mm -hmm. I, I, I preach, I have a church, and uh, I also have a right to belong to a political party. Mm -hmm. But in my church, you you have flocks you you have a lot of people and then these people they also belong to their own political party mm -hmm. now you as a preacher or as a head of that church you don't need to force people to belong to your party mm -hmm. or you don't need to discriminate people based on their uh, differences or political differences yeah. so it's an organization where all the people meet yeah and we also need to teach people about the civil rights to do the right things yeah and, Mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what is the role of the church as far as educating its members about the importance of exercising their civil rights, such as voting tomorrow? Um, some people would say that uh, in their churches, uh, political activities are not allowed. So, how, how do you balance this? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an obligation for every preacher or church leader to teach and educate people. Uh, look, under the Constitution of Namibia, uh, I guess this is uh, Article 21, right? Mm -hmm. It's giving uh, people rights to belong to any political affiliations. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, poli uh, as a church leader, you need to teach your people to have that obligation to go and vote. Like tomorrow, we are going to the polls and vote for our preferred candidate, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it is very much important. Church people, Church uh, members, they shouldn't just stay at church say, I'm just a flock of the church. Mm -hmm. They need to go out there tomorrow and vote for their preferred candidate. Yeah. To use also discernment spirit, you know. People are campaigning. People are telling us, oh, we're going to do this for you. Mm -hmm. uh, once we vote us in power, we're going to do this. It's up to them to discern which one is uh, uh, 
a honest or yeah. a true leader mm -hmm. then to vote for that person okay so what then would you say because ordinarily the, the the one of the few times that we see the church and politics mixing is when uh, church leaders are invited to political rallies to come and do an opening prayer and so on and that's really where it ends what are some of the, the deeper sort of partnerships that these two systems can forge if any at all yeah so uh i think you know uh, as a church leader Mm, you, even though you belong to your own uh, political party, mm -hmm. you you got to be uh, neutral or impartial. Mm -hmm. So now, because a church is an organization for everybody, and everybody wants the service of the, of the clergyman. Mm -hmm. So now, if you are invited, you can't say, no, I'm not going to this party because uh, I'm a preacher and maybe I belong to this. You have to accommodate everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, it looks, it's the same with uh, kingdom. You know about the traditional authorities. Mm -hmm. They also fall in the same category because yeah. you have the nation and these people are from different affiliation mm -hmm. and you have to serve all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And not even to preach, to be on your pulpit and uh, discredit this leader. Ah, this leader, if you win, the country is going to be in darkness. Uh, this one is... Uh, Mm -hmm. blah 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 it, yeah. a lot of things mm -hmm. yeah that's where the the problem comes mm -hmm. because people are not impartial sometimes and they discriminate they disinform disinform they misinform people mm -hmm. using the bible yeah so so then what what would you then say um, especially with elections uh, due tomorrow you you say that the churches should be impartial and and allow their congregants to to support or to affiliate to political organizations mm -hmm. of of their choice how how do you how do you then sort of because because you are saying that uh, christianity and politics can sort of uh, find a, a common ground they are in the twins yeah yes but there is this perception that politicians are these bad people who are just promoting corruption and so on and the church is seen as this as this holy institution. So <laughs> how does those two come together? Yeah, this is why now church is very much important when it comes to politics. Mm -hmm. Because any leader who is voted, I advise they 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 rule according to biblical principles. Mm -hmm. If you look uh, in the Bible, there is a scripture like uh, in the book of um, in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs twenty nine. Uh, chapter 29 verse 2 he says that when the righteous rules uh, the people rejoice mm -hmm. and when the wicked rules the the people mourn or they they, they groan mm -hmm. because the person is not gonna rule the people according to the principles mm -hmm. and they remember the story of uh, uh, Solomon King Solomon mm -hmm. in the Bible you, you, you know he, those years, um, there wasn't president. I can say uh, countries were, were, were ruled by kings. Mm -hmm. you, you can say a king was like a president yeah. or monarch, mm -hmm. you understand. So now Solomon was a king of Israel and he was like the president of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then in the Bible says that one day he spoke to God and God asked him and said, what do you want me to do for you? Yeah. And then he said, nah, I don't want anything from you, God, but I want you to give me wisdom mm -hmm. to rule these people that you gave me because it's 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 a it's a big responsibility that is on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I need wisdom. Give me wisdom to rule the people. Yeah. So that's why uh, we don't need to look at politicians as bad people. We need to pray for them. We need to guide them as Christians so that they can rule in a, in a, in a Christian way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But some people would argue that look, not everyone is a Christian. So, yeah. uh, how do you then? Where, where, where does that line? Where does that line get drawn? Yeah, that, that's where there's uh, differences now, mm -hmm. because now, okay, if you look at Constitution, um, the Article Twenty One now, mm -hmm. they are not just talking of, of uh, religious organizations. Yeah, you know, they are also talking about beliefs, and I guess that's. Uh, traditional beliefs or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you find some people are not uh, Christians. Yeah. Yeah, so they, 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 they believe in other things. But 
Okay, that's not the point. What what is needed is the leader thereof. I pray that the leader believes in God, because mm -hmm. I don't think there's there's a thin line between Christianity and um, honesty, mm -hmm. truth, and loyalty, mm -hmm. and that is what's needed by a leader. Mm -hmm. A leader need to a leader need to uh, to be honest in truth. Also, a leader need to to have the heart of the people that is uh, ruling. Yeah. Let me say there is hunger in the country. There is uh, poverty, uh, unemployment. So if a leader is really in God or believe in God, he won't he won't he won't make a mistake to 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 solve the problem of the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, lo looking at our political setup locally, um, w would you say um, our political actors appreciate the characteristics you just mentioned there as to what a, a leader should should uh, sort of uh, <laughs> believe in or practice um, when they when they are in power and and, and ensuring that uh, through their leadership um, the, the the Christian uh, sort of values that you just mentioned here also incorporated into their leadership. Do you think you see that in our political actors? Yeah, I, I believe there's a, there's a need, there's, a, it's, there's something that is lacking in our leaders. So with all due respect, like, look, when we started school those years, I, there was like uh, 2000 somewhere there. Mm -hmm. we, we got religious study, Bible study in school, but now you don't see it mm -hmm. anymore. And this way we, we, we learn values of uh, morals in the society. Mm -hmm. You know, morals is when somebody believes that this is wrong, you can't do this according to the values and the morals of the people. Mm -hmm. So now our leaders are also, I think, uh, uh, departing from that uh, values. But I pray and I wish our president is going to be guarded by that. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially this time where the country is facing economic economic situation, poverty, mm -hmm. unemployment, and and the people are frustrated. The youth are angry, and and they everybody is blaming the other one, and you don't know who, who, who is to be blamed now. Mm -hmm. And this one is saying, nah, the 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 government is involved in poli I mean, uh, in corruption. Mm -hmm. There's too much corruption. They are not honest. And then the government is saying, yeah, young people. You are not not doing anything. You are not going to school. You are not creating job for yourself. You mm -hmm. not, you see. Uh, so when we bring in the Bible and the values of Christianity, we're gonna find a solution. The leader is going to be honest to the to the people, and the young people are going to uh, to, to 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 take the civil right and and be responsible, not just to be drunkards in the mm -hmm. clubs every day. They are becoming criminals and then bringing a lot of burden to the to the to the country. Yeah, and the and the leaders thereof. Mm -hmm. So so would would you, would you say um, you mentioned that uh, there there used to be religious studies those years in in, in schools and now it's not there. Um, would you say this is contributed to to the moral decay we see in our society today? Very much, very much. And I, I, I'm praying the leader that is going to be there, she or he, gonna take the, up that task to bring back the, the Bible uh, or religious studies in school, mm -hmm. because it is contributing to the case. Look, in religious study we're taught mostly about um, immorality, mm -hmm. sexual immorality. Uh, teenage pregnancies, uh, uh, these things of gangs, gangsterism. Mm -hmm. Young boys are now involved in gangsterism at a young age. They are joining gangs, prostitutions. That is, even if you just go out now in the corner, mm -hmm. you find already a sister in the corner and say, yeah, mm -hmm. business. You know, because something is lacking in the community. They, were not, they are not taught. Something yeah. is lacking. Okay. Yeah, so if we tackle on that, I think we're going to find a solution to, to the social problems of this country. Yeah. yeah. Okay.
Okay. Mr. Nguluka, we'll head for a short break quickly and we'll be back to continue our conversation. To our viewers, we'll head for a short break. Stay tuned. As the holiday season draws near, ShopRite and Synergy Chatbot are delivering the Christmas spirit. Welcome at Santa's wish list. Follow the instructions to submit your drawing and letter to Santa. Step one, start by drawing a picture for Santa. And when you're done, just jot down a few details about yourself right next to it. Step two, scan the QR code and it will open up WhatsApp with a little message that says hashtag ShopRite Santa. Just send that message to Santa. Or if you like, you can also type hashtag ShopRite Santa into WhatsApp and send it to the number as indicated. Step three, follow the simple steps in the chatbot and submit your name and age, and most excitingly, the present you've picked from the list. Don't forget to include your physical address so Santa can find his way to you. Step four, once you've completed the previous steps, snap a photo of your drawing and your letter to Santa to submit your entry. Now, remember, I'm looking forward to all the wonderful drawings and letters you will be sending my way. See you soon, and keep spreading that holiday cheer. Ho, ho, ho! ShopRite Namibia and Synergy Chatbot are delivering the Christmas spirit. This festive season, I've got a very special surprise just for you. My magical elves will be delivering gifts straight to your doorsteps. Grab your crayons or pencils and draw me a picture. Simply save the number on your phone and follow the on-screen prompts. Welcome back from the short break and thank you for staying tuned. Uh, Mr. Nguliqua, um, tell us a bit about the sort of values or characteristics um, you as a clergyman um, would sort of want in a leader, in someone who would lead this country. Yeah. You see, um, one of the character in a leader should... Uh, should we conclude with the election tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we, we're going to have a, a president that is going to rule mm -hmm. us. Whether you're from this political party, you, you lose now. You're going to accept that this one is not your leader. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we, we want to see in that person is humbleness. Uh, humbleness and the fear of God. So the leader should be humble. If you look at the story of... Um, King Saul in the Bible. There's a, there's a great lesson from King Saul. Mm -hmm. He was a king. He was chosen over Israel to rule Israel. And then the Bible says that um, people were happy as he was, he was voted. Yeah. They said, oh, we, we got a king now. Just like that. We have a president now. Now, when he was voted, after some time, the characters begin to change. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what mostly happened to our Politi politicians mm -hmm. during the campaigns they speak good words they will tell you i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this but as time goes on they change mm -hmm. so a leader needs to be true to yourself you need to be consistent you know consistency is needed in a leader mm -hmm. the characters that you you were uh, portraying during the campaigns yeah. you need to be consistent with that uh, character it also give the citizens uh, confident in you again should you be uh, again be nominated in the next election yeah. term like f after five years mm -hmm. so if you become consistent you are humble you lead uh, your people well you you bring service to the people you 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 don't let your your people to suffer they're gonna have uh, trust in you mm -hmm. so humbleness is very much needed not like soul the case of soul the bible said that the men also when to be rejected by God. You know about that story? Yeah. Uh, they say that King Saul was rejected by God. Uh, God spoke to Prophet Samuel and said, Look, I'm the one who anointed King Saul to become a president. But now, 
I rejected you as a king over my people. Mm -hmm. So the character of Saul changed and then he ended up doing bad things. He ended up killing people. He ended up pursuing even David and um, everybody in the community began to say that uh -uh, something is wrong with this leader. And then mm -hmm. he was rejected and he lost the power. Yeah. So it's very much needed to, to be humble. Mm -hmm. So, so this change of character that you speak about um, after being elected into, into power, what, what do you think causes this? Mm, I would say it's uh, pride, you know. But where was the pride when they were campaigning and being so humble? You, you know, <laughs> when, 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 when somebody is uh, um, campaigning, they, they will always uh, show the, uh, the different character. Mm -hmm. you understand um, and and the pride comes in when this person knows that I'm now in charge so there's no election for now mm -hmm. and I got the power on myself mm -hmm. so now the pride kicks in and then they don't deliver to the people anymore mm -hmm. yeah and th that's why I've seen some countries whereby the term is not even over People are already tired. Just five years, man. Mm -hmm. It's not even a lot of years. Five years. People are already tired, and some people are even uh, uh, wanna involve in coups, and and that's not what we want, mm -hmm. even in Namibia. But by the way, I I love Namibia because we don't experience such things, but I see it in other countries. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So w w there's been this um, talk within, uh, especially in, in in local authorities. Uh, and also amongst the sort of what they call traditional churches, hmm. where they feel that uh, there's a, a mushrooming of churches, um, Pentecostal churches and so on, they feel that uh, the government should sort of uh, strictly monitor and regulate the space because there are too many churches. And some of them are blaming uh, some of this new establishment uh -huh. of all the chaos that's going on in our country. Exactly. Yeah? What, what is your take on that? Yeah. You know, we spoke about pride, mm -hmm. and then this this now it's concluding to pride as well. Mm -hmm. Have you seen uh, a political leader campaigning? Mm -hmm. They will also, they will speak about God. Mm -hmm. They will promise heaven on earth. Uh, we're not going to discriminate on every, a, anybody based on churches, based on um, social status and whatever. Mm -hmm. But now, this is, I can say, this is pure discrimination. It's a pure uh, violation of the constitution right of the citizens. Because I feel like sometimes the Pentecostal churches are being discriminated against. Okay, they are saying that uh, they are mushrooming, but at the same time, we got a lot of clubs, bars, mm -hmm. they are mushrooming. Okay, we got people that are becoming preacher, young people that are coming up and becoming mm -hmm. preacher. But don't forget, we also have possible uh, gangsters that are transitioning from go being good and then becoming gangster and mm -hmm. becoming robbers. And they are not talking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just focusing on, yeah. on, on, on churches and mushrooming. I, I feel like sometimes people forget God who put them in power. Like, it's, it's not a debate. It is God who anoint leaders. Even the leader that is going to be voted tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to tell you, God has already allowed that leader. God has already anointed that leader. Mm -hmm. And then that person, when he goes in power, she goes in power. They, they forget about God, mm -hmm. that he's the one who anointed me. They don't need to discriminate local, I mean, uh, uh, like local authorities, the bylaws and what. They don't need to discriminate against churches. Because churches are even good citizens. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christians are good citizens. They they live according to values of the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you look in the book of Ephesians, they say that. Uh, do you want to be uh, good with your leader? Then do what is good. Mm -hmm. So th these are Bible scriptures that are guiding Christians to live uh, uh, to live uh, uh, a, a responsible life. You understand? Yeah. Churches have contributed a lot in this community. They have uh, uh, charity events. And the number one thing about the church is uh, the, 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 
the, the, the, the, they give uh, counseling to the people who have social problems, especially yeah. with these suicide things, marriages that are falling apart. People, yeah. they run to church, they find refuge in, in church. It's the church they, they run to first. Mm -hmm. And then the government shouldn't forget about this biggest responsibility that church is having in the community. Mm -hmm. Not just to, because you are full of pride, uh, you feel like you don't belong to this church, then now you want to come up with your own laws to create yeah. your own laws that are discriminating uh, other organizations. That's, that's wrong. It's, and it's sort of pride and forgetting who puts you in power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you say traditional churches are, are threatened by the sort of new churches that, that, that have just uh, sort of come on the scene? Mm -hmm. Would you say they are threatened? Do they have any reason to be threatened? Yeah, uh, I don't think they're supposed to have a reason of being threatened. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes I feel like uh, they feel they are threatened. Mm -hmm. But I think the way of doing things, especially the way of conducting sermons, they, okay, we say traditionally that there's nothing like uh, this is, this church doesn't belong to God. All mm -hmm. the churches, we are all Christians. We all mm -hmm. serve one God. But I think the approach, the way we do our things, especially when it comes to sermons, uh, when we organize conferences, youth conferences, marriage conferences, prayer days, uh, these things attract a lot of people mm -hmm. who are in uh, social problems. Yeah. And that's how uh, these uh, revival churches got an advantage because of the approach of how they do things. Mm -hmm. Because they do it differently from the, our traditional church. And then when the people are migrating from traditional church to uh, new revival churches, mm -hmm. that's how they, they, they become threatened. But I advise if they will just change the approach, how they do things, I, I don't think there will be any differences. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. because we serve the same God. Yeah. Myself as a, as a, as a revival or Pentecostal preacher, I don't really discriminate anybody that you are from this traditional church, you are from this, you're going to, some people say you are going to hell, you don't, mm -hmm. your God is not true, what, what, nah, we, there's only one God. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, elections, S tomorrow, polls are open at seven. Um, what is your, your final message uh, to, to Namibians? My final message to Namibians is that we, 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 we must go out there and exercise our democratic rights. We, we must, uh, we, we must uh, leave uh, the official to do their works. No disturbance. We don't, we don't want to hear war. People are fighting. I think there was 2015 somewhere there mm -hmm. when there was, uh, there was some chaos. People were fighting at the polls. And, and police have to be involved and, and, you know, and, you know, when there's this kind of chaos, the laws will also have to take it cause people will be arrested. And yeah. that's how we find uh, anarchy and, and, and the cal uh, calamities, things that are happening in the countries. You, you see the situation of Mozambique. Yeah. People are fighting. We don't want this thing to happen in Namibia. Yeah. We want peaceful vote and uh, transparent voting. I know there's a lot of misinformation, yeah. <laughs> disinformation. Yeah, there's rigging, there's what, what. But we need to just exercise our rights. Yeah. And we need to pray for, for the process to go well. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Nzangulikwa, thank you very much for your time this evening. And we wish you well and uh, happy voting tomorrow to you. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Matthias. To our viewers, that's it from the Evening Review team. Please do exercise your democratic right tomorrow and go vote. We will be voting. See you at the polls. Have a pleasant evening.